The current state of therapies of cancer in children is, is it's looking at a glass that's half full or half empty. In the last 50 years, we've gone from cure rates of 4% up to an overall cure rate of over 70% of children with cancer. The Greeky Children's Cancer Research Institute is a freestanding institute that's focused entirely on the development of ideas to help cure childhood cancer. The overall mission of our institute is to understand the causes of childhood cancer and to develop new approaches to more effective therapeutics. One of the strengths that we have here in the Grihis Children's Cancer Research Institute is the ability to look for potential molecules that can, we can either use as therapeutic targets or we can potentially use to figure out how these proteins work at a more detailed level. So we're really interested in a class of proteins called intrinsically disordered proteins. And our research, because we're structural biologists, we, use, we apply NMR, it's very useful for understanding exactly how these proteins work at the atomic level. In Ewing sarcoma, there's one specific protein that arises from a genetic or a genomic translocation event and it creates, it takes two pieces of different proteins and fuses them together. And this fusion protein is what really drives the oncogenesis of the Ewing's tumor. It turns out that it's an intrinsically disordered protein it has some very unique functional characteristics and we're interested in understanding how these work at the atomic level. On the mechanistic side, we are studying how regulation of DNA damage repair pathways may affect the response to drug treatments. We are using single cell technology to understand these processes uh, in the context of EWS R1, Fly1, uh, gene translocation which drives these tumors. On the therapeutic side, we are developing novel nanoformulations of drugs which are aimed to deliver drugs directly to the tumor side and uh, by that they will reduce toxicity in the system, they will enhance um, overall therapeutic index. For these studies we are using uh, Xenograft tumor models in mice. The problem in the field is there is a high cure rate of, of about 70%, but for the 30% of children who relapse, there is no cure currently. And so what my lab is trying to understand is what leads to relapse and what's causing in these 30% of the patients that don't respond to therapies, how can we target our treatments in them in the future? In the laboratory, we model uh, rhabdomyosarcoma using multiple systems including the zebrafish. The zebrafish are particularly a good model to model this disease is because of some of the properties of the animal. What we try to understand is we know that all the cells within the tumor is not the same. There's heterogeneity. What we've shown is there's a stem cell population and there's other cell populations that are required for growth. And we tend to understand how this heterogeneity results in relapse disease. There are many types of uh, pediatric cancers um, that still don't have a therapy that is uh, working effectively or the therapy is very aggressive, like in the case of uh, medulloblastoma. My lab works on uh, RNA biology and genomics and uh, we focus on RNA binding proteins and microRNAs. We try to understand the role of these uh, regulators uh, in tumor development, uh, tumor initiation, especially in the context of uh, brain tumors. And we're also trying to identify ways of targeting these regulators uh, to develop new therapies. At the end of the day, we are just you know, trying to develop uh, uh, new methods using RNA binding proteins and microRNAs uh, as a target to uh, target brain tumors. I think in the experiments with gliomas, we some years ago showed that a specific inhibitor downstream of the oncogene that's activated in these cancers was very effective against pediatric uh, anaplastic astrocytoma and clinically that's been shown to be the case. So now the, the objective is to see if we can develop therapies that prevent drug resistance from occurring. I think the goal of all of our experiments is ultimately to develop more effective, less toxic and therapies for children with the cancers we study. As we go forward and we start, as we start to understand the molecular underpinnings of pediatric cancers or particular cancers that we're interested in looking at, and we find those targeted therapies that we can start to replace the old therapies with more less toxic, highly effective cancer treatments that we can employ in the clinic. And I believe that the, the GCCRI is, is going to be absolutely pertinent for doing that because 
We have all of the molecular expertise here. We have all of these investigators that have um, tremendous expertise and, and a capability of, of giving these sorts of insights. And so each one of us is making tremendous strides towards understanding you know, what is going on in these cancers and what it is that we can target. And we can bring all of that together and hopefully move it forward into the clinic. Well, the Grehe Children's Cancer Research Institute is a fantastic place to study and think about new ways of solving the problem of pediatric cancer in terms of understanding the cancer, designing new ways to approach pediatric cancer patients and make progress in the field. I think the Grehe Institute will play a major role in, in how cancer therapies are being developed, in part because we can take risky projects that others wouldn't tackle and potentially target oncogenes that are the drivers in these cancers to develop much better therapies. I think the other aspect is that this is a great training environment for young students and postdoctoral fellows to, to learn how to do cancer research and then apply that in their careers.